Hello and welcome to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven and I am clearly not in Indiana. I'm actually down on the Gulf Coast of Florida right now and I thought I'd take advantage of this beautiful setting to sit down with you and go over all of the final details for the Fusion. As I mentioned in my last video, the Fusion is not only finished, it is now sold. As you know, the Fusion was my very first Copart salvage car rebuild project of any kind. And through the project, I didn't talk about prices. I, I haven't told you how much I paid for the car. I haven't told you how much I paid for parts or any labor that I've had done on it. Uh, but I've promised you that I would. So now that the Fusion is sold, I want to go over how much this rebuild project cost me, how much I sold the car for, and all of the little things that I didn't think about before I got started. Lessons I've learned along the way and things I would do differently if I had it to do over again. As I go over the various expenses for the Fusion Rebuild Project, I'm not going to give specifics on every single part that I bought, how much I spent on each individual part. And the main reason for that is because prices vary so wildly across the country and different countries if you happen to be somewhere else. Uh, the cost of these parts is going to be drastically different for you, or could be at least, uh, depending on what part of the country you live in. Um, I bought some of my parts online through uh, Rock Auto and eBay and a couple of other places. Um, I got some parts from salvage yards uh, in my area, pick -up parts. And then I also got parts uh, from some local businesses. So depending on where you're able to source your parts, uh, the prices may vary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you uh, a rundown of some of the things I had to actually buy for the car, and then I'm going to kind of give you a lump sum total of what I spent for different categories like parts and labor and so on. So I've kept pretty specific details about what this car has cost me along the way, and I actually created myself a spreadsheet. I, I created a first page that was kind of a summary page. I created a worksheet uh, specifically for all the different parts I had to buy and then I also created a worksheet for any outside labor that I had to pay such as uh, the windshield installation, paint, uh, so on and so forth. So um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is first give you how much the car cost me, then uh, a rundown of some of the parts I had to buy and how much that cost me, and then what I had to do as far as outside labor and how much that cost me, and then a grand total. So first of all, you know I bought the car from Copart. Now in Indiana, I can't purchase from Copart without a broker since I don't have a dealer license. So for my first car, I actually purchased from Copart in Dayton, Ohio. In Ohio, you're able to purchase a salvage title car without a dealer license. Uh, so that's exactly what I did. And the funny thing about my first rebuild is it almost didn't happen. Um, I actually was just starting to study up on, um, on salvage car rebuilding. I was starting to do my research. I was watching videos from people like Sam Crack on uh, YouTube. And I was, of course, starting to browse the Copart uh, website and app looking at different cars. Um, as I did that, I just started putting in lowball bids on things that I didn't expect to actually win. Didn't have a very good idea of exactly how the system worked back then uh, or what cars should be expected to be worth. So I probably put in a dozen different lowball bids on different cars and of course as I expected I didn't win them. Uh, the thing about the Fusion is I put in a lowball bid on that car as a pre-bid uh, a couple of days before the auction and then when the auction came up I watched the auction live and nobody else bid on the Fusion. So I was the only bidder. I pre-bid my amount and um, I won the car because no one else wanted it. So how much did I pay for the Fusion? My winning bid on the Fusion was $250. And then once you include the cost of uh, all the different Copart fees, some people like to call them the Copart taxes, but once you add in fees and, and all of that so, sort of thing, uh, as well as taxes, which I didn't pay to Copart, but of course had to pay uh, in Indiana once I got it retitled, the total purchase price of the car with all of that thrown together uh, was about $490. So a little under $500 for the car. Now, if I had to go back and do it again, I think probably that my pre-bid would have been a lot lower or that I probably wouldn't pre-bid on a car like that at all. Um, if I actually wanted that car, I'd probably bid on it live and if it got up above uh, whatever value I was willing to spend, uh, then 
I just wouldn't buy it. Uh, but like I said, this was kind of an accidental purchase. I hadn't finished my research before I got surprised. And hello, you've got a car. So um, that's how I ended up with the Fusion for just under $500, winning bid of $250. Uh, it's possible I could have gotten the car for less uh, if I were doing it now. Uh, maybe I could have gotten it for less. But again, I was just learning. I made a mistake and I won a car accidentally. So the next thing you've got to consider when you win a car is of course uh, transportation. If you buy the car locally it might not cost you much to get it home. Uh, a lot of the auction sites will even provide um, local delivery uh, at a cost of course but they have towing services that they contract with so they can provide local delivery. Um, or you could of course have the car transported and if the car was worth a lot more maybe that would have been worth it. I got quotes on having the car shipped from Dayton to uh, my home in Indianapolis and and uh, it was a little over 200 bucks uh, to have it professionally shipped. Well, this car is a pretty cheap car and it would have been almost half the purchase price just to have it shipped, so I wasn't gonna do that. So I borrowed a buddy's truck, rented a U-Haul trailer, and went and picked it up myself. Uh, so the cost of transportation uh, was about $70. So one of the biggest expenses you're going to run into with any rebuild project is simply the parts you need. So some of the things I needed were a hood, uh, hood hinges. If you're buying a car that's been in a front end collision and you need a hood, it's probably good practice. Just go ahead and replace the hinges as well, whether you think you need them or not. Um, I needed a new hood latch because that was bent. I needed a uh, uh, hood latch support panel. That's a real technical term there for you. Um, I needed to have a bumper crash bar as the metal part that comes across the front of the car. It's underneath the bumper cover, so I needed one of those. Uh, I needed a headlight on both sides, so two headlights. Uh, of course, needed the plastic bumper cover on the outside. Uh, I needed two fenders. I needed a core support. I needed a radiator, a radiator fan assembly. I needed um, the uh, AC condenser and a few hard lines for that. Um, as well as uh, a variety of hoses and sensors and hard lines uh, for the front. And you saw a lot of that in the first videos as I was taking parts off and showing you what was broken. Things like the air box and the power steering fluid reservoir uh, and things like that. Um, additionally, on the inside, I needed um, both airbags. Uh, both front airbags had blown. Thankfully none of the side airbags had blown, but I needed a driver's steering wheel airbag and then the front passenger dash airbag uh, as well as some wiring for that. And then a variety of other things. Uh, something else you've got to keep in mind is just because uh, certain parts were broken in the accident doesn't mean that the car didn't have other things that were that were either damaged or just in worn out shape prior to the accident. Uh, thankfully I didn't have too much of that but there were a few things that I had to take care of uh, along those lines as well and I'll get into some of that in a little bit. So the cost of all of my parts including the shipping for anything that I had to have shipped was about $1,300. The next thing I want to look at is any outside labor that I had to have done. There were a few things going into it that I knew I was going to have to hire someone else to do, uh, but several other things popped up along the way that I did not realize. For example, I did not realize the car had a broken windshield. Looking at the pictures on the Copart uh, listing, I couldn't tell the car had a broken windshield. Now that could have been solved simply by doing an in-person inspection of the car and I would have seen that it had a broken windshield. Uh, but like I said, the car was an accidental purchase and I didn't, and I don't know if I would have known or thought to do that in the first place anyway, even if it had been convenient enough to do so. So I had to buy a windshield. I uh, didn't realize I was going to need that. Uh, the car didn't have any keys when I bought it. Now I knew that. Uh, the car was listed as enhanced, so I was already kind of taking a risk that way. And the reason it was listed as enhanced was simply because it had no keys. Uh, so I had to hire a locksmith right after I got the car uh, to come on over to my place and um, cut keys for the car. It was a really neat uh, system that he had of figuring out what the uh, pattern of the key needed to be. And then once he had that figured out and he was able to actually turn the key in the cylinders, then he had to program it to the car. So I bought two keys, um, but I of course had to pay for uh, the services of a locksmith. Uh, anytime you have a car with um, in an accident with airbag deployment, uh, you're going to need to get your 
airbag module reset and most likely your seat belts reset as well. Now I had the benefit of having a sponsor for that episode uh, so myairbags.com actually paid for that service so that didn't have any cost to me other than shipping the parts to them um, but um, that is something to keep in mind if you're working on a car. Most likely you're going to have to pay to have those things reset and rebuilt. Uh, other outside labor um, I had to have, of course have the front hood uh, fenders and bumper cover all painted uh, so my buddy who has a body shop was able to do that for me uh, he got everything painted very nicely it's beautiful work uh, but of course I had to pay for that as well um, something I didn't think about until right at the very end since my AC system had been broken uh, my condenser was uh, was ruptured uh, I was pretty mangled up if you remember that and then I also had a few hard lines from the AC system that were damaged as well that I had to replace uh, well anytime you have a, a rupture in the AC system or you have to take anything apart of course you have to have the AC system recharged um, if you know how to do that yourself and have the equipment then that'll only cost you uh, the uh, the cost of the refrigerator um, if you don't have the equipment or the know-how to do it, then you of course have to pay a local shop to do that, which is what I did. And then one additional thing that I had uh, no way of knowing ahead of time, in fact I didn't realize it until the car was done and I was able to finally take it out on the open road, uh, was the front right, the passenger side front wheel bearing was shot. Um, it sounded terrible going down the road. This is not accident damage, the car wasn't hit over there. Uh, it's simply a maintenance item. Those things go bad over time, um, and there was no way of knowing that the car was going to need one of those, and I didn't feel right selling the car uh, with a known bad wheel bearing. That could be potentially a, a safety hazard. So I went ahead and took care of that front wheel bearing, getting it replaced by a local shop as well. Actually, the same shop that did um, the AC recharge for me did that front wheel bearing, um, and they gave me a good deal on that. But nonetheless, that was an expense that I didn't uh, that I didn't think of ahead of time. And then, of course, you've also got the cost of cleaning the car up. Now, if you have the equipment and the know-how and the time, um, you can detail the car yourself. Um, washing a car is not that difficult. Uh, polishing it, uh, you know, a little more work, but not that bad. Vacuum it, of course, is not hard. Uh, but my car needed uh, a full... Um, interior detail with shampoo of the seats and carpets um, on the outside I wanted to have it um, uh, polished and waxed uh, so that the new paint on the front and the original paint would match a little bit better the color was a great match but the older original paint was a little bit duller so I went ahead and paid someone to go ahead and give the car a thorough detail inside and out that's another uh, cost though that if you know how to do it and you have the time to do it uh, that you could save that uh, but in my case I went ahead and paid to have that done so the cost of my labor was about $1,400. So with the cost of the car, transportation, the parts that I needed, the labor uh, that I had, as well as a few other miscellaneous things like getting it retitled and all of that, uh, my car cost me, uh, we'll call it $500 for the car, $1,300 for parts, $1,400 for labor. So we're at uh, 2700 we're at $3,300, and then about $200 in miscellaneous things like the title fees, uh, registration, insurance, so on and so forth. So the car cost me about $3,500 all in. So my $250 first salvage car rebuild project at 2007 Ford Fusion turned into a $3,500 cost to me. Ouch. That was certainly a lot more than I was expecting. Um, but once I was into it, I wanted to do it right, and uh, that was the cost of doing it right. So knowing that the car cost me about $3,500 to rebuild, do you think I was able to sell it for $3,500 or more, or do I have a loss? Yeah, you guessed it. I actually sold the car for a loss, and I figured that going in. But I was able to sell the car for $3,000, which in my area is a fair price. Um, in my area, and that's something you got to keep in mind that your area may vary but in my area that car in that condition with that mileage with a clean title goes for between thirty five hundred and forty five hundred dollars uh, depending on whether you're looking at private party or, or buying it from a dealership or so on and so forth um, it might be different in your area it might be worth more it might be worth less that's not really up for debate but in my area that's what a clean title version would be so I listed the car on the Facebook marketplace and was able to sell it within about a week for three thousand dollars 
Even though I lost $500 on the car, I think I did really well selling it for $3,000. So now that we know that I lost $500 on my first salvage car rebuild project, let's talk about some lessons I learned, things that I would do differently, and whether or not I might have been able to do it uh, differently and actually make some money on the car or at least break even. Well, the first thing that I learned, of course, is buy your cars intentionally. Don't buy them accidentally like I did. Do your research. If at all possible, go to the salvage yard, go to the Copart location or IAA, wherever it is that you're shopping, and look at the car in person so that you have a better idea of exactly what you're bidding on. Now, there will always be things that you're not going to be able to tell by looking at it at a salvage yard. For example, there's still no way I could have told that that car had a bad front wheel bearing. But I would have been able to see things like the broken windshield or the condition of the interior, um, things like that, and been able to get a better sense for exactly what I was going to have to do to this car. So first lesson learned, check it out in person if at all possible. Uh, you do run a risk if you purchase a car only based off of pictures. That's not to say you shouldn't do it, but just understand you're taking a risk and you should keep that in mind uh, when you're setting your purchase price. The second thing I learned, especially on a car that's as old as that one was and it's not a hugely valuable car, is how I purchased the parts. See, I dove right in, again, before I had any expertise or, or any uh, real uh, experience doing this, and so I just started figuring out what I needed and started buying the parts piecemeal uh, wherever I could find them, the local pick-apart yards, the, uh, the internet, local stores, so on and so forth. If I had it to do over again, knowing that I can get a car like that for under $500, I would probably try to find another car of the same color, if at all possible, but at the very least the same kind of car, another salvage car that had rear end damage so that the front parts are probably all just fine. And then all I have to do is unbolt them from one car and slap them on my car. If you can find a car in the same color, even better, uh, because then you probably won't have to go to the trouble of getting it painted. So if I had it to do over again, I may have to wait a month or two to find the right car in the right location at the right price, uh, but if you're willing to take the time and find, um, uh, find another car, another salvage car with a different type of damage, then you can get all of the parts you need from one place and save yourself the trouble of, first of all, hunting down all those parts, and then, of course, also spending um, the amount of money that it costs to get those parts from all the different various locations. So if I had it to do over again and I was rebuilding that car, that's probably what I would do is just buy another car just like it. And the last lesson I've learned, I've basically already said, but as always expect the unexpected. There's going to be things that you're just not going to see, even if you go look at the car in person. There's going to be things that maybe you accidentally break. There's going to be things that, um, that pop up that you just couldn't know about. So always plan in your rebuild budget for some extra that uh, you're just not going to know about ahead of time. So am I disappointed that I lost money on the car? Well, yes and no. Of course you don't want to lose money. But on the other hand, I was able to launch a new YouTube channel and gain a bunch of subscribers. Thank you to all of you. Um, my YouTube channel is now monetized. Woohoo! So it's actually making me not much, but something. Um, and then that car gave me a colossal education. Um, and then, of course, you also got to keep in mind, I don't do this for a living. This is a hobby, and hobbies cost money. So all of those things taken into consideration, I'd rather have made money, of course, but I'm not going to worried too much about having lost money on my first rebuild. I think in this case, that loss was money well spent in all of the lessons I learned on that car that I can apply to future rebuilds. Well, the battery on my main camera was getting ready to die, so I guess it's time to wrap this video up. I hope you found this wrap up on the Fusion Project interesting and helpful. Maybe it's given you some things to think about uh, if you're considering getting into a rebuild project of your own. If this is the first Crossroads Rebuild video that you're watching, thank you for watching, and I encourage you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then click on that bell so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. And if you haven't already done so, I encourage you to go back and watch the playlist of all the videos in the Fusion Rebuild project. Click the links in the description to follow me on social media, and then stay tuned to the channel for more projects coming soon. I'll have another update video coming on the BMW very soon. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.